the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here's Nikki. Hello, here I am. Welcome to the show. It's the Nikki Glazer podcast. It's Thursday. Uh, that means we have um, Fanthrax, which is our listener voicemails that we'll get to later in the show. I'm excited about that. Noah said there's some good ones. Um, top of the morning to you, Andrew. I like the, I like the foreshadowing. Really? I usually do that. It's like if you stick around. Ooh. Around minute 42, you might get what You're you like, want. I like that thing you do that most shows do. <laughs> Literally every other show on TV <laughs> and every podcast does except ours. Foreshadowing is not like um, I'm exactly telling you what's going to happen. It's usually it's like, like and maybe omen. later we will hear from someone. That's oh, more foreshadowing. But is there shit. like a dark so the, what connotation to it? Oh, maybe. Why don't you give it a little look see up <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to know if it, is it maybe it's um a blended with like some predicting something with asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> Ham drip. Ham drip seeds. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I don't know what that's called when you're It's a warning or indication oh, a warning. of a future event. Indication. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't mean it's ominous. Could. You want to hear some new words that I've I've learned from yes. um, both reading a book and from Sam Harris? Let's hear it. One of Let my favorites. Um, I, I would love to. Obstep, obstreperous. Obstreperous. <laughs> O-B-S-T-R-E-P-E-R-O-U-S. Obstep, obstreperous. Obstreperous. Um, that's obstreperous. something to do with your... Uh, you can't speak. Or you like speak too much. Like, like something that gets in your way. No, it's noisy and difficult to control. How did you know that? Well, I was thinking strep throat, and then ob is big. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I got to it. <laughs> well, that's actually like how you get the, the etymology, I think. What, etymology? <laughs> yeah. it's uh, <laughs> Your mom? Ch- chilled soybeans. <laughs> um, fusty, F-U-S-T-Y. Fusty? That's Fergie's sister. I just like sister. that word. <laughs> 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 yeah, she was an original member of the Black Eyed Peas. Fusty. It, uh, fusty. That's a, a fish song, I think. Uh, fusty. Fusty is like uh, messy. What about Little Fusty? He's pretty cool. He's coming up. <laughs> Kanye just signed him. He hates Jews. He's cool. <laughs> um, what did you say it was? Uh, like messy. Uh, well, it, it's smelling stale, damp, or stuffy. The yeah. fusty odor of decay. That'd no, it's not, it doesn't mean it means smelling. It doesn't mean messy. Yeah, you, for sure. You were not on par with that one. I'll give you the other one. That was very impressive. <laughs> okay, pres- <laughs> precipitously. Don't even. I can't even say that word. I'm. Not, you think I'm going to learn it? Can we try it precipitously? <laughs> like precipitously. precipitation. Precip- precipitously. Precipitously. Yeah. So uh, precipitously means uh, it, um, it. It's uh, or precipitous. I comes guess is before, the root word. Comes before. Dangerously high or steep. Oh. Man, I got precipitous Lee. at that fish show. Dangerously <laughs> high. <laughs> it's dangerously high or steep. Precipitously. I love That was the Sam Harris one. And then my favorite one, I've been listening to the Sam Harris podcast to lull myself to sleep probably for a week now, and I can't get past. I've only done half of it. And this word always wakes me up, and I try to go remember it, and I never have the... Um, I'm not awake enough to write it down on my phone, but last night I was, and I got it. Alacrity. 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 That means uh, you're lacking um, <laughs> You alimony. can't just hear a little word inside <laughs> it. <laughs> Why? It worked for the first one. <laughs> I guess it did. Alacrity. Uh, alacrity. Can I have it in a sentence? Um, she accepted the invitation with alacrity. She didn't really give a shit about it. She doesn't want to do she it. She accepted the invitation with uh, like hesitation. You, you mean like like uh, apathetic? Um, no, it means brisk and cheerful readiness. Of course, yeah, yeah. So if you're uh, now spelling these words would be a whole nother alacrity thing. was hard. I put it in my phone as E L, and it's A L A. Alacrity, yeah, alacrity. So that's just a little. How far did did you do the spelling bee when you do you remember when you're oh in yeah I got high, a, elementary I, school everyone I think probably remembers the word they got eliminated on if you're a competitive yeah punk mine was word <laughs> I didn't get right I spelled it with two R's <laughs> you're probably a good speller right no oh not <laughs> get out of here you're not do you even know who I am like do you get nervous writing things like in front of Brenna. I get nervous sometimes reading things, not knowing words. Ooh, yeah. Sometimes I'll look, 
Like, so in Jewish... Wait, you don't... You get nervous reading things. Yeah. But I read a lot... But if I don't know a word... Mm-hmm. But, but wait a second. No, Hold no, on. reading Spelling. out loud. Reading oh, out loud. Okay, okay, Sorry. gotcha, gotcha. So like if, um, you know, a lot of times with like Jewish religion, each person has to go around the room and read like a passage... So yeah, I'll start... most of us do that in just normal school. No, just yeah, it's not like it's the religious just part of it. Yeah, it's just like the tradition. Uh, I don't think that's a tradition you pass down. Where you have <clears throat> in the Jewish culture, maybe it is. Uh, I don't know. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> but uh, didn't you just do that in sc- regular school where okay, you would just go through school, a chapter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in non-Jewish I school. I just want to make sure everyone can relate to this, but I feel like it's. I'm like, yes, what school did you go to where you only did that out of the Torah? Okay, this is broader than I thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, in regular non Jew school, yeah. in history class, uh-huh. some people did history. I would read what I had to re- read before it got to me because I was so did nervous. That. Okay, everyone did that. Again, uh, this is a no- this is I guarantee but just you, Jews. I think you can make a meme about that of like <laughs> you know when it's when I know I have to read. You count the number of people where it's going to be, and you go paragraph paragraph, and you count which paragraph. Yeah, yeah. and it's the worst. <laughs> if you're a teacher out there and you do this. Make it random so the kids can't c- count ahead because you, mm. you will not be present otherwise. Yeah. Or oh. just don't do it because I w- you're never present. You're always reading what's next. And I, sorry, as a fast reader and a fast person, Ooh. I could not stand. W- it made me hate the, sm- the slow kids. And uh, by the way, reading comprehension or being able to read it's a, a th- you could be an, w- the most intelligent person and just have a reading a learning yes. disorder that makes it so you can't read. So it, uh, but my dumb six year old or sixth grade brain would be like, this kid's dumb, and then you're then I think that kid's dumb the rest of my life. There are certain I can remember who was a slow reader that I go, God, can Ray Poole please read every passage? <laughs> he was like the smoothest reader. Yeah. He he read so fast, it was like delicious. I was like, oh, please call on Ray, and then they would always call on. <laughs> You know, Jeff. I don't want to say slow Jeff. Is that but what you want to say? But their names are on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. You know, like I remember who, and I was just somewhere in between. But I would really, it would almost actually be fun to see what words they would come up with. My favorite ever was Tyler Schoonover. He was not a bad reader, but he just got ahead of himself, much like I did on Wheel of Fortune when I said, "Where is the metaverse, and how do we get there?" Instead of I, I realized that story. You thought I, you would go on Wheel of Fortune and you would read each word when you guessed the clue. Whereas I see it as like, okay, I know it, and I'm just going to say it, which is a mm. mistake. But you would go, where is the metaverse? And how that, but most people don't. They just kind of go, oh, it's a common phrase. And then they just go, you know what I'm saying? I, I could see how I could get common phrased, right. like tricked. But, but I, yeah, I see what I you're saying. I realized you though. thought I was like just reading I as we, like a, like a, who would ever do that? Yes. But you know, I was just like saying what I thought it was. No, that's what I, I, I thought that. Okay. I thought that you just made a. I don't uh, want you to think I'm a Monique. No, I think you're oh, dumb in many name. ways. So I think you can be dumb. Now you're really, yeah. But, but there is an argument that you read too fast. Yes. It, well, it's got, it, this is a problem for me. It's like <laughs> I, the Wheel of Fortune and yeah. um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I just am too fast and then I make mistakes. It happens all the time. Have you seen the video of the guy that went on like a shark? tank kind of show uh, or like x factor and he said i'm the fastest oh yeah so funny it was like a ugandan yeah. america's got talent and the guy takes the book and just goes <laughs> he goes like <laughs> he goes what, what's in that <laughs> and the guy goes what are you doing and he goes i just read the book really fast book. and the guy is so serious <laughs> i guess you had to be there um uh, it's so funny it's so and the guy funny. like assaults him he's like you oh. get off my show acting like this he's really mad i mean it's one of the funniest things i've ever seen <laughs> it was good but what has, has oh I yeah saying? sorry yeah so the slow kid speeding speed re oh no yeah spelling what did you get knocked out on spelling pigeon pigeon P I G. what did you throw a j in there i mean i'm guessing i did p-i-g-o-n or but I, that e-o-n pigeon or adding a pigeon. d but so you are a bad speller i'm not great I, I mean, I never made it to the finals in the, the spelling bee in school. I never. You came seem close. like someone who would be a good speller to me for some reason. That's weird. But yeah, I, d- I think that's just rude. There are certain things in schools where I go, man, they should. Re- I, what do I know about educating kids? But there's some things that make kids so insecure that it takes them out of the moment and they cannot. They, I would be so nervous so many times in school that I wouldn't absorb any information because I was scared about my part that was coming up. And like, you shouldn't make every kid perform. Not every kid wants to be performing. Although, you know, it is something they're going to have to use in their life. Like, I know people that can't call 
to order a pizza or something. You know, like kids have so much people that, yeah. you know, f- people that have that anxiety. And those anxieties, I used to be that way. I used to have that much stage fright. And so it's like that you can overcome that. So maybe we should force kids to do it. I don't know. I mean, it's crazy that we both do a profession where we can speak and memorize for an hour or whatever. And then if I had to do a play in fifth grade, I did exactly what you said. I would only be thinking about what my line will be. If I'm going to remember a line, I'm going to look like an idiot for not remembering yeah. the line. Oh, I was so in plays where I didn't know anything else that was going on. Nothing. And I still do that for scenes. That's bad acting. Yeah. Because acting is like <laughs> you're supposed present. to actively listen and and – and you can tell bad actors when they're just not, you don't see them making a listening face. Like, I think that's a part of acting where it's like you have to actually be in the scene. And I find myself doing that all the time where I'm just like, I was in a movie on Friday night called Cursed Friends on Comedy Central. And um, it was the first movie I've done where Amy didn't put me in it. And it wasn't like just like a handout kind of yeah. thing, even though she was very adamant at the time about like, I'm not giving this to you because you're my friend. I'm doing it because you're good. But, I, you know, I, and I appreciate her saying that, but this was the first time I booked something. And I probably booked it because a little bit because I'm a, a name. It was a small role. It was like a day's work or less than. No, it's because you went to Tish at NYU. <laughs> yeah. I That's don't know. Why. Like I auditioned for the lead <laughs> and I didn't get that, but I got the, they were like, well, we'll give you this. So it was nice, but I didn't audition for this role, but it was still nice. <laughs> Um, and I watched it on Friday night and I was a little bit nervous because I just, you know, I wanted to be an actress when I was in middle school and high school. And then that didn't, I just never got the right, I never got the roles I wanted. And then I auditioned for theater school and college and I didn't get in. And, um, and I don't really try that hard when I act. Like I don't go there. There have been times for auditions. I go to acting coaches and I'll work on it for like an hour maybe, but I don't really give it much more effort than yeah. that. Even when I get the role, I kind of memorized it on the way there. I'm sorry to is that to uh, the men who made that as film. a scapegoat. Then, yeah, I'm just too nervous about it being bad, so I just put it off. And it's I don't think it's as much as I go. Oh, if I don't work on it a lot, I'll have an excuse for why it was bad. It's just I'm just too scared of working on it because I just want to delay knowing I'm bad. I think that's more of it. Mm-hmm. I think so many people say people procrastinate because they're like, oh, I'll, I'll have an excuse for why it's bad because I waited too long. But mine is I just don't want to find out if I'm bad <laughs> until later. <laughs> it's like cleaning your room. Do you, you know when you wait to clean your room? Are you waiting so that if you don't clean your room well, you can say, well, I only had 20 minutes? No, you're delaying it because it's sucks to realize that you are a mess yeah you know? okay i see what you're saying so it's like i delayed working on that role because i just didn't want to deal i mean maybe it's a little bit of both but i really do feel it's like it's uncomfortable being like i said bad can you change how, how you view that in your brain you think to go oh, you know what i am a decent actress well i saw it on friday and i was like oh i made choices i don't feel like i look like myself in the role i feel like that was a, like i did a good job i was like oh Okay, I could be an actress. Like I, it was great. the first time I saw myself, and I was like, you know, and I feel pretty. And in Trainwreck, I did it. I wasn't convinced of myself. I was like, uh, you kind of seem out of place with all of these great actors. It just does. It didn't. It looked like me doing a middle school role. And to if me. you tell yourself that you, whether Amy said it or not, you tell yourself, I'm only getting this because of X, Y, and Z, then the confidence yeah. isn't going to be as strong. I just like. I was so nervous on those sets. Yeah, I felt like oh, I didn't belong would, there. But that, how many people were in the room? Like a hundred. It was crazy. Watched. Doing Trainwreck was oh so cool. God. And both of them, um, I feel pretty shot in Atlanta, and um, and I had a scene with like the hottest guy that I've ever seen in my life <laughs> in front of me. Like you know, just, do you talk to him before you start? He's the, the he's the brother of the boss woman who's played by Michelle Williams and he's like he's in Game of Thrones too yeah he was really nice and I was just like like I couldn't what's his name what's his name I don't even know he's just the. he's so cute and he was British I don't remember but he um I play like a model going in for like a meeting Tom Hopper yes Tom Hopper yes yes which one is he hop on this yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's a good That's looking guy. He's very nice. And um but Trainwreck because that was a Judd Apatow film, he was directing it. That was wild cuz we were in this living room and uh. he had like a little speaker in the corner and he would direct from like the a van outside and so he would like have us and you he would you could hear his direction coming from this little speaker and we would just run the scene a million times until we just started like completely 
improvising. Always be improving. Did that feel? Improving. Did that feel more natural? Just like doing it like that compared to. Yeah, then it gets more comfortable because then by the end of it, you're just like, oh. But I've heard that a lot in acting is like, or I guess I heard it once from an actor I respect. I forget who it was, but they said acting is annoying because maybe it was Spade saying that. Um, it's sometimes it's frustrating because when you're on set and you're doing a scene the last take is the one that you're like, I'm finally comfortable. And it's like, we got to move on. And you're like, Oh, what can we start from yeah, there? There's some directors that give you like two. They're like, no, we got, I got yeah. exactly what I wanted. It's like, well that, that I kind of like, cause I go, Oh good. Well, I trust the them. Reader. They wouldn't have that's the guy reading fast. I will say Dahmer is so well acted, <laughs> but there's one person in it that nah, is yeah. one of the worst actors I've ever <laughs> seen. And I do not want to call this person out cause I would feel horrible if it were me. But oh my God, if anyone wants to slide into my DMs and make oh, a I guess about who it is, I would love if um, it's someone who is a guest, like only a couple episodes. I'll, I'll tell you that. So I just would love to know if anyone else was incensed at the TV at like how bad this acting was because it was so funny. I wish I was the kind of person that would call people out. I felt so bad the other day about calling out the band that opened for oh. the Toadies. Gotcha. Reverend Horton Heat. Horton Heat. I felt yeah. I was like plagued by um, sadness that I that I put that out there in the world that like I didn't like an artist. But I will say that not everything's for me, and they probably wouldn't like my stand up, and they wouldn't like Taylor Swift, and so they and they had a ton of fans, and I know they have a ton of fans, and it's just not for me. Just yeah. like most of the t music that Noah fucks to <laughs> would it be for me. <laughs> <laughs> the gentle, soothing, sexual tones that Noah <laughs> hardcore fucks to. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of music. I love Noah's Noah. music is the kind that, like, you know, music Jeffrey Dahmer plays when he <laughs> Jeffrey fucks Dahmer dead would bodies. say that was too much. Yeah, he'd be like, "You're ruining the mood yeah. here." As he's like, has a chainsaw. Can I just kill another guy in silence. <laughs> like, I love Noah. Like setting the scene, like lighting a candle, <laughs> making the ambiance perfect, lighting down the, and then fuck yeah. You I mean that that impression is not even good. At, like it oh, yeah. was so crazy. I couldn't believe how crazy it was, and I think no one uh -huh. said that that was her. You know the relax. That was music. foreplay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was her? That was her spa music. When you go to a spa and you hear like <laughs> yeah, yeah, gentle like you know I don't um, like it. Enya, are yeah. you just like so uncomfortable with anything that's like soothing when you listen to that music? Like your bar must be so high for. <laughs> Like spa Enya kind of music, I don't like, but I do like Brazilian music, like sambas and bossa novas and stuff. Okay. Which are a little well, bit getting better. a massage, you might like some spa music, maybe. Or would you rather be listening to Megadeth? I mean, I would probably rather listen to Megadeth, but you know, the, <laughs> so I just tune it out. I love Noah getting a root canal to just what? fucking. Slayer. I want to do like a study on people that <laughs> like that kind of like what I've never. I, it's I, never ring true with I me, and I feel I like it's. It's so interesting how different humans can be because there's nothing about it that I could. I couldn't find anything to like about it. The only thing I would like about and it, I'm is sure if people would say the same. I'm about lifting my music. weights, and it's like motivating to just fucking become an yeah. animal. But even then, it's almost too much. Like I don't like. I I don't know. I I, I get why people love it because of rage. They yes. feel it. They could feel the actual energy. It's not just like a singer singing. Like it's every emotion coming out, and I get that. I get screaming. It you know, sounds it's like, like they're all moving like trash cans in a you know stomp. concrete hallway. Like it just sounds like scraping and like these <laughs> you know like nails on a chalkboard sounds. Why doesn't Noah give us? Can you give us a playlist? Will you make a playlist of five? I don't your, think I can do it. Let's try it. I don't think I can do Let's it. Let's see if we can get through three. I, I don't think it's gonna work for me. I don't think I'll start it off I'm, light and I'll and I'll work it up so you can. I want I want Ken lights. Burns to do a series. <laughs> Ken Burns got me into jazz. Maybe Ken Burns metal might get me into it. Slowly panning. Ken Burns did baseball. And he just did the Holocaust too. <laughs> yeah, all your favorite things. <laughs> He's got as, a, as a Jewish man, yeah. Uh, you know, Have you seen the Holocaust, Ken Burns? <laughs> No, just no. Nah, I've just heard stories. From oh my family. god! I my I went over to my parents and they were watching it, and I just it was I'm like sure so was, upsetting. Yeah. I was like, can we put on Mass Singer or something to cut the? <laughs> it was just too. But it was it was. I mean, it's great and it's good. Like, is that something? But like, as a Jew, do you feel like you should watch it? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I I think I've I probably seen read enough. more about the Holocaust than you. 
I'm fascinated by it well, because again, it. it's that more vicariously <laughs> through my great grandpa. But do you ever read about it or like? Yeah, I know the years thirty nine <laughs> through forty four. <laughs> We have to go to break. You know the years. Okay, alacrity. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> oh my god, you know the years. Yeah, I know. So, I know a lot about Hitler. We're back. So we're back. Andrew knows yeah. the years of the Holocaust. Hitler was born on four twenty. He was a painter, a failed painter. <laughs> He had a little funny mustache. Did you ever go to any of the... Yeah, I went to all the parties. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I went to Dachau. I did. You I did? I really did. And uh, yeah, there was like a teen tour there, all laughing, all these German kids. like, ah, 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 And I was like, Jesus. German kids? Yeah, and I was like hung over, and I was like, these fu- oh, fucking... We're well, all starting another World War Three right now. Right. But they would take me. There was yeah. like 40 of them. Well, people but have it written was a to lot. me about um, going to... Uh, the 9-11 memorial. I lived in New York for, you know, Here's the 10 years off and on. It's oh. like, well, how did I not go to that? And well, I'm so, I mean, I'm a 9-11 head. It was downtown. It was pretty, there were no comedy clubs right But I, I would, have you <laughs> been to um, um, a concentration camp, Noah? Have you gone and toured? Uh, no, but. Um, would you go? Or is that something that's just like, it's too much? I would like to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's heavy because because the buildings are the buildings that like nine eleven. It's a brand new building. It's hard to like connect to it. But if the fire building was still there, like well, you I mean, walk the museum, in museum, and they have all like you know there's it, right. I've I've heard it maybe Auschwitz they have like the pile of shoes. There's like all those are the well, things. The that room were, that they went I mean, in. Yeah, yeah, you could feel there's it's artifact. eerie. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking. It was pretty intense. I mean, I was also hungover. Or Why maybe did you still go drunk. Hungover? Huh? And did you go alone? No, I went with my older brother. Oh. And this other guy named Jose who hooked up <laughs> with this. There was a thing. We went to Hofbrau House, which it's in. Uh, it's in. Um, Is it like Soho House? Uh, no, it's like this or place Germany? where these women bring out beers and they'll hold six gigantic oh, beers in each and their hand. And big cleavage is right there. Yeah, and, and my they... buddy hooked up with one of the girls and he said his dick never felt smaller because she's has such a grip on she's like she can hold huge steins <laughs> yeah. of ale. <laughs> this is the same guy. It's a really funny. We went to Prague and there, you know how there's no water in the toilet. This is the same Heath Ledger trip. Yeah. Uh, this is yes. Okay. This is post Heath. There's no uh, there's no water in toilets. Yeah, and so we ended up meeting these three girls on the Euro Rail from Miami of Ohio, and he liked one of the girls, oh, so he, he put it in a bag. He shit in he shit and he took it out because he didn't want it to smell. But he left it on the windowsill Wait, why is in there the no bag. No water in toilets. How does poop go down? I don't know. Just fucking. And he left it on the windowsill when he, he left, left it on the windowsill. And he comes out. He's like, "Oh my god, she went in the shower, and I left my shit in the windowsill." And the door was locked, so he couldn't get back in. Yeah. Oh. So he, well, he, good thing it was just a f- hookup in a, in a different country. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine what her party. story must be? Like oh, the story no. I don't know. What if she ever told anyone? Well, she it never came up, and he hooked up with her later. So maybe I get she was so into sad it. when people have great stories that involve poop or like something embarrassing, and they just never tell anyone. Like if you have a story that is just horrifying that involves you pooping or finding a bag of poop or hooking up with a guy who pooped your bed or like get like <laughs> tell the world it's not when there's no judgment. Don't hold that in. I'm uh, so jealous of people with good stories. I, he did shins. Oh yeah, he, he essentially did, which yeah, is yeah, which is with the my old technique. Which I mean, it, I would still do it t- to this day. Which yeah. is, you wrap your hand in toilet paper <laughs> and you reach and you you get you make little mittens called shittens and you reach and you grab it out if it's not flushing and you have a big line ahead of you, because otherwise the person in line after you is gonna see that you took a shit. Especially if you want to fuck that person, you got to get it out of there. Yeah, I mean, I oh man. So anyhow, but yeah, no, so yeah, so. The Hofbrau House, so we went to that place and had like, you know, f- six of those big beers, and that yes. was the night before. How, how is your drinking going now? Are you still like loving it? I've never was really. I mean, I'm not trying to defend it, but I was never really loving it. It was just like something I was finally like, I don't really want to hold on. But I. I but is it fun? Not still? really. I, I haven't drank. I've had like two drinks in like probably for a month. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm kind of like, all right, I I because it was did like it starting to feel like hangover and just like not good. Yeah, I just I, it just didn't. There's no point in it. There's really no point in it. I'll have like one tequila on the rocks, just one, mm-hmm. and it'll just make me feel a little loose. Yes, and that's it. Yeah, there's no urge in me. 
to wake up hungover, to be out till two in the yes. morning. It's not for the party. It's just like, it's kind of nice. Just a refreshing, I don't know. I wonder what it was before that you tackled that. Because I, I mean, you just wanted to never stop. Like, well, at least that was for me. You just have one. You just, that's not enough. You just want more. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I just, I mean, there's uh, it's just self-hatred is one. Yes. Uh, being anxious around people, trying to be the life of the party. I didn't have stand up to fucking have people love me. Yes. So I needed the party to love me. So mm-hmm. I had to be as funny as possible. I didn't think I could get the girl, so I might as well just get the crowd to laugh at me. Or get drunk and be like, oh, that's why I didn't, because I was busy doing that. Get, a, get ahead of the mess. Get ahead of the mess. <laughs> yeah, Let's get, get to the news. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah, you heard it here first. Oh, it's Thursday, folks. You know what that means. It is Thursday. We're having a banger over here. All the swells. Back to you, <laughs> Noah. <laughs> You guys know Shirley Manson, right? She's Shirley Temple. Yeah, I think so. I mean, she's the was she lead, lead singer of what? Garbage. Yes, band Garbage. Oh, for some reason I would. Oh, Hole is the one that what's her name is in. They're kind of around the same, same vibe for sure. Same genre. Yeah, yeah. Something so anyway, so her eyebrows she, waxed but too. she has like I remember she had like red hair and very pale yeah. skin. Yeah, and she Got sang it. that song "Stupid Girl," which. I don't know anyone Stupid who didn't like it. girl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Any um, relationship to Marilyn Manson? It's a no, weird because he no. doesn't have that name. That's a fake name. It's made, it's made up. Any relationship You've got to Charles watch his doc- documentary. He's the fucking worst. I hate that guy. Hate Marilyn Manson. Hey, if you don't watch, if you still have any part of your body that likes Marilyn Manson, please watch that documentary. You do not know what went on. He is a horrible person and should be locked up, I think. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad guy. All right. Let's hear what Shirley Manson did. Dick, too. Okay. Well, Shirley Manson said in an interview that when she was 18, she took a crap on a cheating boyfriend's breakfast cereal and she's not ashamed Mm. of it. Okay, well, I like that she has this story and isn't scared to share it. Um, I'm wondering in in the box, like, had he just poured himself a bowl? Like, who leaves a bowl abandoned? Did he eat it? Did she pour it on the ground and then then shit on top of it? Like, was it cocoa puffs where it could hide, or was it frosted flakes where you would see it? Man, <laughs> I don't know. That's I, a strong move. I would be I, scared. It would it would be like if I knew if I trusted myself to have like beautiful, dainty little girl shits. Then yeah, fine. If I'm having like a good poop day, maybe. But I don't want anyone seeing my poop, I know especially that, a guy who cheated on me. I'm, he'll be like, "Oh, good. Th- that was the right move." I mean, there's something about it being so self-deprecating in a way where it's like self-deprecating, yeah, yeah, self-deprecating <laughs> where you almost respect. Like, it's not like I mean, Amber Heard. They said that she did that. I mean, maybe it's a thing that I have wh- a friend that peed on a girl's laundry because they were in a fight. It's such a gr- it's <laughs> it's like a dog. I think that I you think Shirley Manson said like I'm glad I did it. I'd do it again, right? Something like that. She I yeah, recommend she even, doing it. She even said that she inspired her friend um <laughs> who was doing it and told her that while I was doing it I thought of you. And uh she says I recommend it as an act of revenge. It leaves you feeling em- empowered and gleeful. Hmm. Wow. I would just be so I mean I don't run in the same circles as Shirley Manson, so I bet like whoever she was dating would think that was kind of badass. And any girl that dated her boyfriend in that scene, it would probably be like, "God, your girlfriend's so fucking cool. She took a shit on your cereal." It kind of goes with the name of a band. But if I did that to Chris, it yeah. would be, I mean, they would. It'd be done. They, It'd well, be yeah, done. it would yeah. be like, "Good thing you cheated on her. That person's a psycho, as as it should be." I mean, that is so gross because shit is so infectious. Some people are into it, though. Some guy might actually eat that I mean, Matt, cereal. You have and- a real, if you are in this <laughs> poop, you should go get your... Unless, I mean, remember that one comic we worked with who was like, I love eating ass, but you get sick a lot. Oh, man. That's I mean, a- that was with Tom Takar. We were, we work yeah. in D.C., and there was a guy, I won't say his name, but he would like, I love eating ass. I just love it. Like, he liked to do it casually. And he was like, but you do get sick a lot. Like, I just, I get the stomach flu like once a month. <laughs> it was just like, holy fuck. Um, I mean, I am so, I don't want anyone seeing my poop. I don't want to, like, except my girlfriends, I do not care. Like, yesterday, I was in such a that. bad mood. Yeah. And then I went to the bathroom to pee, and then I had, like, the greatest 
poop poo of and my life. Better. And I was like, oh, that was it. Like it was, I just, it, I gave birth, like it was, and, but I want, and so I wanted to send a picture of it to my girlfriends, but you ca- I can't, I just can't. Because if it got if it got out in any way, I had the joke about this in my special, but it would be more embarrassing than a picture of like my hairy like bush, bush then or it, then like then if I had a yeah. yeast infection. I'd but be how more would they connect it to you? How would they know it's your poop? I, I don't know. Even if even if I would deny it, of course. I mean, in my joke, I say I'm I'm taking a selfie with it, and like, why did I have to do that? But instead, so I did what I did. I needed my friends to see like how impressive it was, so I drew it. <laughs> I took a piece of paper. Uh, yes. Now I remember the joke. And yeah, yeah, I yeah. held it next to it and I traced like <laughs> a, the approximate size. And I, then I sent a picture with my hand next to it on the piece of paper <laughs> to show the size to just be like, guys, scale. guess what I did? <laughs> and then Anya goes, I actually have a lot of these from when Nikki and I lived together because that's when I started doing that, yeah. of drawing it because I couldn't take a picture. But I was so proud of myself. And, and, when you're a tiny, like, not, I'm not like a tiny girl, but when you're a girl and you're like capable of that, you're just sort of like, what is going like when you draw it do you like look at it like an like kind of i'm picturing titanic where it's like paint me like one of your french are you like looking at this shit for a while no 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 it takes you two seconds i just put it so i put it it was like a manila envelope so it had some like weight to it so i put it next to the like half on the bowl and i like right next to it so you are staring the exact size i wanted i don't want to exaggerate i knew you did i I didn't shade it so you could see like the depth or anything i did but no but a lot of people can corner. look at it and go, oh, that's a pretzel. I'm going to draw a pretzel. I see you as it being a perfectionist and being going, well, I, oh, yes, to scale. Well, oh. because the point of the picture was to show the yeah, how impressive yeah. it was. And so in order to do that, I needed to get it exactly right. Uh, Otherwise, I would have just like, yeah. The poops that I get sent, sometimes they'll so be like. So you guys send each other poops? Yeah, we've done it. I, when with they're my brothers. impressive or just because it's funny? It's funny. Like sometimes it's like three identical ones and they're all lying. Up, oh like, my god, like, that's pretty impressive. It I've, had, like a I've hamburger. let so many poops go down the drain that have looked like things that I'm just like, <laughs> man, I want to take a picture of this so bad because I see faces and things. I'm one of these people that can see faces and things like clouds, clouds, or like backpacks, or like I, someone's back that has sweat on it. I'll see like different, and <laughs> yeah. I, there's just certain. I don't know. I'm just I. I have that too. I don't know what. I what is that called? What I is don't that know. I don't know. I had a thing. I remember I was uh, like in the shower like on the wall yes i like look closely and i can see at the like, dentist office all the uh, the dappled like kind mm-hmm. of um d- d- work on the what's it called the drywall on the top those tiles there's all those like little marks and i always find little faces mm-hmm. oh yeah in my shower there's always a face in the sidewalk i see faces Dude, all I, the time i tried to bring someone in i remember i was in college freshman year and i go look at this do you see this face of like a, a duck having sex with a a, a pterodactyl okay, t- Tell me what and you the guy see goes, when you, I send you this. The guy looks at me, he goes, what? He looked at me like I was insane. Oh, I send them to Chris all the time and he goes, I don't know what this is. And I'm like, it's E.T. I thought it would Why be Why did you so- tell me already? Oh, man, I shouldn't have. <laughs> but look at this picture I took. It's I mean, it's kind of like, what's that? The Rorschach test or whatever? The Rorschach, Rorschach. yeah. Yeah, yep. that's a good point. It is like that, but it's like I saw this, and he he didn't even respond to it, and I was like, "How could you not respond to this?" And he was like, "I just was so confused. I didn't know what it was." And I'm like, "It's so clearly ET." This is the picture of your shit. It's gonna be so funny. <laughs> oh my god, it would be so good. If it's I like I don't know why you put I've it on a bike. I've never taken one. There's not a picture of my poo that exists anywhere in the world. I can't find it right now, but it was so good. I posted it on my story at one point, and a couple people saw it, but I thought it was going to like kind of break the internet because it looks so much like et it's to like me. when you see and Jesus's, no one even cared you know when people see jesus face and like the, random like things and people yes. yeah and toast people go insane i yeah. mean et is a pretty big one you would think and uh, it was just in front of me i was running in forest park and then all of a sudden this girl had a backpack on in front of me and i was just like oh oh my yeah i remember God. that from your story yes i didn't okay and think did i didn't you think see it, it as et i just saw it as like a face Okay, oh. maybe I had it wrong. Okay, here's Forest Park. <laughs> Let me just pull up this and see if it comes up on this. Remember when we went to Forest Park that one time? Yeah, that's the one time. Yeah, yeah. we went and we um went on those. Uh, oh, last night I did something very similar to that. I went on um, a... You did an activity? Oh, my God, a big activity, man. I'll find the ET picture later. Um, I went on... Um, 
One uh, of those bike things? No, a ferry boat. A, a boat. I went on the, uh, it's called the Becky Thatcher, but it's like a river boat. Oh, down the... There's only one river boat down by the arch. Oh. And I went on a river boat with Chris and my sister and uh, my brother-in-law, Matt, and they were screening a show, a show about paddling that my brother-in-law's uh, business was featured on, and it was like a happy hour and a screening of this thing, and then it's like a two-hour river boat ride. Was it nice? Did it you was see nice. parts of St. Louis like, oh, okay. No, I mean, you just see a bunch of like kind of sad parts of St. Louis industrial garbage on the side, but it's on the river and it's kind of pretty and it's <laughs> yeah. at sunset and you see the arch and that's really pretty, but it was, it was fun. It was cool. It was nice to do an activity, but also overrated, like could have done something else with that two and a half hours when you include the commute, you know, but it was nice to get out. I met new people and stuff, but it was a thing. And then, um, okay, let's get to the next news story. Okay. Shirley Manson shits. <laughs> okay, so here's some uh, news out of Missouri. This is ho- like awful. A terrified oh, woman I saw with, this. with a metal collar soldered to her neck escaped a dilapidated home where she had been captive for around a month. She desperately dragged herself to the front door of multiple multiple neighbors' home to ask for help, telling them she was a sex slave while her abductor took his kid to school. Oh, damn it. Yeah, it's one of those things. Where this is Kansas City, Missouri, by the way, on the other side. Oh. Do you know what that where it is? Yeah, yeah there's two Kansas. There's Kansas yeah. and City. Yeah, right? but it's, no. all, it's Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. So this is on the other side like you know, of Missouri from where we are. If you folded like Missouri in half, St. Louis and Kansas City. I am a little Kiss. confused, actually. Is Kansas City, Missouri, are it the same city? Uh, no. No, but it's just like Kansas City, Missouri is, I think, a little bit nicer. Oh. You know. Okay. It'd be like East St. Louis slash St. Louis, but not as bad. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Yeah. But it is the same Kansas City. It's just, it's split no, down. No, no. <laughs> they're two different cities. Because they're, you know, there's a, there's a St. Paul, there, you know, there's a um, Portland, Maine, and there's a Portland, Oregon, oh, okay. but we don't call them, we're not like, but it's, they're all Portland. But Maine and Oregon are very far apart. I know, but these two have different But you see how I can be tricked. Yes. Yeah, yes. they tricked me. I'm um, from Florida. I've elaborate. never been, yeah. So it, um, yeah, so this is really tragic. First of all, <laughs> I think it's so crazy how every one of these stories where someone escapes and is asking for help, it's always multiple doors they have to bang on because people are so freaked out yeah. that they don't open their door and people just don't want to be a part of it. They don't want to deal with it. It's They're that scared. bystander it's effect. Scared. Like, you just don't want to deal with it. I've done it too where it's like, you know, the other day I actually saw a woman crying on this. I was coming back from a run. I was like on the walk part back. And there was this woman that was just like bent over like on a stoop and she was just crying. Aww. And I was like, she seems a little like unstable and she's maybe, I didn't know, she didn't look homeless, but it was just like, she might just be like, a, you know, and I was like, I want to, I got to do it, you know? And so I was just like, are you okay? And she was like, I have a Charlie horse and I can't make it to my car. It's, it just hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. And she's on speakerphone with someone who's trying to like help her. And I'm like, can I get you anything? My apartment's right there. Can I get you like a, a I have like a Theragon Watley. And she was yeah. just like, no, it happens all the time. And this poor woman, she was like a, a youngish woman, but she was just crippled was by this charlie horse no definitely not oh so it was just yeah she was a little overweight like she you could, you could just tell like she yeah just had a cramp that well, was good going for up you her, for helping maybe she was a runner of, but i'm yeah. guessing she she was wearing like flip-flops it wasn't like but she was just like oh and i i felt good about it, but there's nothing i could do i like kind of rubbed her like i was like can i massage it for you and try to get out like distract i didn't know what to do but it made me so sad but generally i think uh, i Sometimes just go. I don't want to bother with some. New York had like made that, me that kind of desensitized to that kind of stuff. I just had something you know? similar too. So what um, happened when my dad drove me to Newark to come back home? We like got out of the car. We're like hugging goodbye, and I see this beautiful young woman coming out of like um like one of those Cadillac SUVs. I guess it was an Uber, and all of a sudden she just starts throwing up, and um she like closes the door. She goes, "I'm sorry." And the car drives away and she's just over there throwing up. And I can't, I can't. So I, um, oh. my dad had closed um, uh, bottles of water in the car. So I just like, I was like, okay, I'm going to just go offer her water because she's going to have this taste of vomit in her mouth on the TSA yeah, that's line. Nice. So I went up to her and I was like, here, would you like some water? And she just like took it, opened it and started drinking. And I was, and I said, 
do you need anything else? I didn't want, because she was probably so embarrassed. I didn't want to yeah, have her feel thing. even more embarrassed and she goes, yeah. I'm good. So I just left her alone. And then I saw her later Aww. in the airport. She seemed a little I wonder if she's hungover or pregnant or... I don't know, but yeah. it was, I'd never seen anything yeah, like I that. Think if someone, she was by herself? Yep. Wow. I think yeah. if someone comes up to your door, like your first instinct is like to be defensive. Like you're afraid. That's, you're yeah. fearful. It's like you're coming into my space. Why are you coming? Oh, you must have mental illness. That's why yeah. you're coming into my space. You don't think, oh, there's a murderer or like yes. a sex. And then you hear that and you're like, oh, well, this just solidifies my point that this person's crazy. Yeah. So I think you're just like so on the defensive that you don't even People hear. People need to watch more her. Dahmer because it's out there. I know yeah. I'm obsessed, but they're like in the first episode is the first episode of Dahmer is when he gets caught. Yeah, yeah. is the last time that he got to you know try to get someone, and the guy escapes and he's running out, and it's the same thing. He's running in the middle of the street, and the cops see him, and he has a handcuff on that he escaped from. He's naked. He's probably bludgeoned or whatever, and he looks insane. I mean, it looks like just a, yeah. a you know you see homeless people like that a lot of times that are just like. They're on PCP, so they've stripped off of their clothes. They look, they've maybe hurt themselves in some way, so they're bleeding, and you just go, and that person needs help too. I mean, like, we dismiss that <laughs> yeah, person yeah, too. It's just like, that, yeah. but it's, you You just don't want to get too close, and you kind of dismiss it. But this woman, um, so yeah, what happened was, with this woman? She was him. held as a sex slave by this guy. He's arrested. They were able, he went out to go take his daughter to school or something, and that's when she got so out. how cocky these guys are. Like, I yeah, love sure. how they have daughters too. Like, yeah. my daughter son, needs an son, education. Son. Yeah. It was a son. son. Okay, of course. Like, yeah. So he takes his son to school and the cops were able to get back to his place and meet him outside before he was able to like no. go in and destroy <laughs> evidence. That's not what happened. Actually, so it's someone's... even worse. It's even worse. What? Really? He was well, I stopped. read the article. What the fuck? He was stopped for like a traffic violation and they took him in because he um, violated some animal code law. So they took him in for that and then they he linked him to the story. He let his sex off the leash? Yeah. Yeah. He was using a, a dog leash on a human. I could have sworn they said they they met they arrested him before he could go back in and ruin evidence while he took his son to oh, school. Oh yes, that's true. But they stopped him okay. on a traffic stop away from the house. Oh God! And Jeffrey Dahmer got stopped uh, by with a traffic stop with bags of of dead body parts in the back of his car, and the cop goes, "You know what? You're a promising young boy, and this would really." You know, he's drunk. He's like, this would really ruin your future, so I'm going to let you go. And then the cop, you know, it's just. That's how Ted Bundy got caught on a routine traffic stop in Florida, oh, at least in the movie. Right. I mean, it's just. Um, I mean, those kind of things, it's got, you're like, is that God? So that might be God, right? Like helping, like, like this guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> God is really slipping if he even lets it happen to begin yeah. with. Like what this whole thing of God really intervened. Well, why did God make you a, him <laughs> yeah, put a chain a around point. your neck yeah. and rape you every day for months? Um, but and, God made that turn. But speaking single. of sex slaves that are held captive, um, <laughs> I have been rewatching the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on oh, Netflix nice. and it is so I funny. remember the first season it being is really funny. so freaking funny I'm watching this I'm on the third season it's it's up there with Veep and 30 Rock in terms of like great jokes if I swear to God if you need a show just to pop on and laugh and just watch the best writing in TV history it's that show I'm blown away last night I was watching and I was laughing so hard out loud by myself, it felt like a, a, almost criminal to be laughing that I don't ever laugh alone that hard. Was it first ever. season? First, I was watching third season. Third season. But I fell but off what, after yeah. like the first season and was like, ah, I don't need to watch any more of this. I remember but, it being very fat, like very 30 raw. It's the same, right? It's right, a great, same, yeah, it's right? Tina Fey. Yeah, but Tina. it is a great um, theme song. Unbreakable. She's alive, damn it. It's a miracle. And it's all about these girls that were held in a bunker for... Yeah. Their entire childhoods till um, they are in their twenties, and then they get out. And so Ellie uh, Ellie Kemper, who was you know on the Office, plays the girl that gets out, and she's just like, it's a great character because she's still a child, and everything is new to her. And by the third season, like she's Elf. she just it's gets like, yes, it's like yeah. Elf. She has that mentality, and she gets everything wrong. And like, the, there's this thing yesterday where by the third season they're just so used to her like not knowing anything. And one of her best friends, Titus, the, the uh, he's I forget who he's played by, but he's like you know this almost like uh, really flamboyant gay guy who loves show tunes, and it's her best friend. 
And she's talking about something. She sees a picture and she's like, man, I mean, that's a MILF. And she goes, and he goes, at the same time, they both say, he goes, we know you're going to get it wrong, whatever it is. We know you don't know it. And she goes, uh, uh, fuck, what did she go? Man, I'd like to friend her or something like that. Like it was like, um, uh, but it was just so funny that they're already being self-referential in that episode of like, it would be funny if she just said what she thought Bill was, but to have him go, we know you're going to get it wrong at that point. Like they're in on the joke. But man, oh, and she gets a text and I put it on my story, but it says, oh gosh, I got to go back to my boss. My boss just said, get, you better get the duck over here. So I got to go find a duck. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like something like that. Yeah, so yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, that was one of like 50 jokes that flew at my head last night. And I was just like, God damn it. Like it, there's so many funny things out there. Stop watching things that aren't funny for the love of except God. Except for Dahmer. Except for D- Dahmer is funny. <laughs> Honestly, it's funny because it's just, he's so weird. But things that are comedies that aren't yeah. that caliber, will you please stop watching them? I don't I know. I think I'm just uh, for so me, disappointed in comedy lately. I love Veep. I, I obviously enjoy 30 Rock. Sometimes it could be too joke heavy for me. That's, and I think people, when you watch it, it's like, it's a lot. Yeah, like, I get like wanting more story with your shows or more heart with your comedy shows. I think that's so why people someone, avoid them. Yeah, but if you're someone who likes jokes, please support those shows because they're the best. Even like I watched SNL last night, the sketch, the Try Guy sketch that people uh, are so upset about. I don't even know what to try. I, exactly. What that's is, what yeah. the sketch is about. It's like, who the fuck cares about this? Why yeah. is this news? A guy cheated consensually with another woman that he worked with. And everyone's like, this S- SNL is done. Like there's this whole like um, backlash for SNL now because they made light of this guy cheating, which I guess is just such a terrible thing. And it's like, this guy had an affair with, I guess the try guys have a, um, a Norm, brand yeah. and then they have another group of people who do things and they're called the food babies and this girl that he cheated with on his wife was a food baby and so now they're like this is about a man preying on someone who works within his company it's like how many fucking people hook up with people that you work with yes. all these people that are talking about like she was a victim i understand that that can happen power dynamics but literally ev- Every show you've ever watched where people fall in love, like how many people have met when someone was at an office and someone was maybe in a little bit more position of a power? I mean, me and my boyfriend. Yeah. So why don't you cancel me? I'm so tired of this. Like this girl was in a consensual relationship. She hasn't come out and said it wasn't. Maybe we shouldn't take her word for it. I just don't understand. Everyone wants to cancel everyone for the dumbest things. Part of me feels like you're not giving this person that was working under the person any credit that they can make their own choice. Yes, yes. And That's, just because someone's your boss doesn't mean what, because people go, don't let anything hold you back from true love. Anything. Except, except for, if he works in the department ahead of you and makes a little bit more money than you. And, then if he, then if you go after him, then you are a victim. And you don't even work in an office anymore. You met on Zoom. And everyone cheats. <laughs> Why are we acting? There was a the whole thing of like, when are we going to stop being surprised when men cheat? Like this, you know, Adam Levine, they called it the wife guy. The guy who like is like, I'm a guy that has a wife. <laughs> and we're always like so let down because I guess this guy, the try guy that cheated, he He's, was known as like the wife guy. Gotcha. He's like, I have a wife. And it's like the people who talk too much about their partner are probably more capable of doing things like this. Stop being surprised. Everyone cheats. Not everyone, but man, it is I way more than you coming. think. I mean, he... he he talks about her so the, well. I mean, these are children that are getting upset about this, and I'm just so tired of... I'm getting on board with, like, the... the. I'm now getting furious about cancel culture. I'm a little late <laughs> to this game, but I think it is so overblown. I am so tired about people, what people are getting upset about. It's ridiculous. Okay, well, let's go to break and not talk about Try Guys ever again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this with Fanthrax. All right, we're back. Let's get to Fanthrax, Noah. Let's do it. <laughs> Noah's getting wet. <laughs> well, look, that is my Beyonce. <laughs> that's true. That is. That is. That's it's obvious. not cheating if it's your. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our first voicemail is from Sarah. 
Hi besties, this is Sarah. I wanted to call in and ask Nikki what she thinks of Bachelor in Paradise so far. I'm loving it Ooh. so much, as ridiculous as it is. And I'm also putting together why I love reality TV so much. It is such a good way to like watch other people's actions and see how they actually play yes. out. Like seeing Genevieve yes. and the things that she's doing. It's frustrating, but it's also so much of I think putting a mirror to who I was in college, like yes. just feeling insecure, doing things out of insecurity, wanting a guy to like me, putting somebody else down like to, to them yes. in order to get them to like me more. And it's just like totally. watching reality helps me not do those things because I see how they actually play out and it's not a good look and it doesn't get you what you want. Um, I also love uh, that they're doing like a Casa Amor version where the girls leave and the guys are tested crazy, but Love. into it. And I also think that somebody <laughs> put a curly toupee on Dak Shepard and he's one of the contestants. That guy looks so much like I him. It's know, insane. I... Uh, side note, I also wanted to ask Noah what it is that she's fed on Pinterest. I'm between Reddit and Pinterest as far as like scrolling endlessly on my phone. And mm. Pinterest is just, my boards are just full of DIY projects that I save and love. Will never do, but have so much fun watching yes. people make this textured art and this thing out of a Dollar Tree thing. But yeah, I was just curious about that for Noah. I love you guys. <laughs> thing of a Dollar Tree thing. She talks like us. She does. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, let's start with you, Noah. What do you look at on Pinterest? Like uh, you do the same thing. I like, can really. What, what is something on your Pinterest right now that you're like, I'll never make this, but if I could choose one thing to do, it would be this. Is there something that you can think of right now? Yeah, so I've been pitting a lot of um, DIY gardens because I want to like mm. grow vegetables and stuff, but I know I'll never do it. <laughs> so Right. Or just like home that, decor yeah, that, that's stuff. That's something you could do. I could see you doing that. And what? Horse stuff? No, home decor. Like the uh, winter <laughs> pots that Kirsten does. Like those are oh, all God pits. damn it. Oh, Don't you talk pot. about never those fall pots uh. to me. I. You know what? I came up with another thing that girls have that i don't have that are like this is a this is a this is a deep dive on like if you're a girl i think that i do have a lot of listeners that don't feel like real women and maybe relate to me in a lot of ways there's another thing when girls like i can't watch scary movies because i'll have a nightmare if you have nightmares about something you watch that night like you can't watch a scary movie because then that night you'll have on nightmares about it. You are a perfect woman <laughs> because I have nightmares, <laughs> but they are never about the thing I just watched. They're always like about something. Compl they're like, I, I'm, you know, I'm missing my flight and I don't have time to pack. And then the taxi cab driver is, you know, my dad, but my, da my dad doesn't know who I am anymore. It's never like I've been watching so much Dahmer. I'm dying for Dahmer to show up in my dreams. I want more episodes. <laughs> but if you are a girl that's like, I can't go see that movie because then I'm going to have nightmares about the purge. You are a girl I want to be. I'm so jealous. And that's a specific thing. But the, like girls who have pretty nightmares that yeah. make sense. That was like he was chasing me and I was naked and like there was blood on the walls. If you have dreams that make sense. You are a perfect girl. Yeah, you're also, I don't think, asleep. I think you're just still <laughs> yeah. in whatever that, what is it called? But when girls like, do do that. I've never yeah. related to girls that are like, I, can I can't watch that. these shows because they give me nightmares. That Anya's like that. And I'm just like, man, I wish I was a girl like that. I'm a boy like that. I used to, when I would watch Nightmare on Elm Street, I was fucked for like a week. And your nightmares would be about that? Oh, yeah. It'd be Freddy all day God, long. God, you're a perfect girl. I'm such a little girl. And I've said nipples for a girl. As far as Bachelor in Paradise. I, yeah. yeah. You know what I like what she said? She said that she watches it to not be like she used to be. Yes. And yes. I thought this whole time that people watch it to justify their shitty behavior. Like, oh, oh. no. I don't yeah. think that at all. Yeah, well, I'm well, an idiot. Well, that's what I've always said about um, these. <laughs> these. Well, maybe. I don't know. I won't want to say I never thought it at all. But I feel like I think a lot of times... I, I guess what I'll say is that a lot of times girls, I think, or guys will watch these shows and be like, I would never act like that. And the truth is you do all the time. So I like that. Mm. What was her name again? Sarah. Sarah. I like that Sarah was able to say, I see myself in this because I think a lot of times we go, I would never yeah. fucking do that. And the thing is, have you ever seen footage of yourself in like a home video or you oh don't know God. you're being, even a picture of yourself you don't know is being taken and you go, oh my God, I slouch like that. I talk like that. Like you don't know. That's why I wanted to do my reality show is to kind of, it gave me a version of myself that I was like, oh, whoa, like my friends and family put up with a lot. Like it gave me a perspective on 
how difficult I can be and how annoying I can be. And um, I definitely think, I mean, it, for, most people aren't watching Bachelor in Paradise, but it is a great season that you should just jump into and you can just jump into it. And it is, it's like watching zoo animals. It's like watching humans in the zoo, like a habitat yeah. where you keep them and you, that's what I've always said about F boy. When I was promoting it, I'd be like, reality TV is like a David Attenborough documentary about like watching this species of animal and their mating <laughs> habits when they are kept in like a tribe. You're like a big brother, like yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like you know, I and I also feel like, um, I with oh. Genevieve especially, it. Mo <laughs> I will say. What I pay attention to mostly is what face work I do and don't want to have done <laughs> and how everyone has a nose job. Everyone, everyone <laughs> in Hollywood, I want you to, I want everyone to remember this. Every single <laughs> actress that you want to be has had a nose job. Every single one of them. And I want to join them. They've all had nose jobs. They've all had... Um, there's one girl that looks like Ariana. I call her Ariana Kardashian because she's a per her face is a perfect mixture of both of them. Um, there's a girl named Shanae who is stunning. She looks like y um, uh, young Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, there's... Um, and then there's Genevieve, who I really like, but... Um, her lips are, I actually kind of want her lips. Um, but yeah, the, in terms of behavior, I really, this is just for, this is just for Sarah, but I really did not like how Genevieve, it, both her and Shanae are like, I'm going to like date other guys. And like it, and the, the, the guys that they, so they're in like a relationship with the guys on like the first couple days, they like find a guy and they kind of match up. Then a new guy comes in and like pulls them for a date. And then the guy that they were kind of matched up with is a little sad. And the girl gets back from the date and she's like, it was amazing, actually. He mm. really showed me a lot of affection. And like, you don't do that. And I need to like know from you. It's like, this guy's known you for one fucking day. And she goes, <laughs> honestly, how am I supposed to feel when you at breakfast, I sat next to you, you gave me one kiss. And he goes, oh, so we're counting kisses now. And she goes, how dare you? And she freaks out. And it's like, yeah, you are counting kisses. It's out of line. You're a weirdo. What a weirdo. It sucks. She sucks. And is, I, f I hate yeah. the idea of any woman being at home being like, go girl, get them. Because you're wrong. These guys, I'm never the one to take the guy's side on these shows. But these girls... Have it all. I don't know where they get this entitlement from. Well, they there get is it a from problem. People going act from being it up, hot, act it up. But yeah, but they get rewarded for being insane. Like that's mm -hmm. why it's yeah. like if you were watching a zoo animal show and every time uh, one of the animals attacks someone, they got a, a, a treat, and you get treats for being as loud and as I know as producers obnoxious. are probably like it sucks that he didn't really touch you at breakfast I could tell he yeah, didn't really how like did he you not kiss you 40 you times probably confront him about yeah, that it's probably bad but because these girls without just it want, it's like uh, all I've realized Sarah and Noah is that women be we just want to feel desired can I say that I hate being one of these comedians who goes let me say that again Say Read again. that again. You mean motivational Jay speaker? Jay women, to all men listening, women want to feel desired. Okay, we want what's to the feel easiest way to feel desired? For a guy to, to make you feel touch desired. Touch us. Touch. Yes. If, you unless your preach. girl is a girl that doesn't like touch touching. But if it's um, early on, I mean, are you free reign to be touched after you kiss, I guess? Just... You know that, what I mean? Like When you're making out, like, she's just... Girls like a guy who is kind of ravenous for them. Yes. But also seems unattainable in a way. I guess it's a it's a hard balance to strike, <laughs> but a guy that is just zeroed in on you, a, a girl that has healthy um self-esteem, I think will really appreciate that. If a gr if you have to play hard for get for a girl, it yes, it's going to work, but you ultimately can't keep that up forever if you want to marry this person. Like, can you imagine playing hard to get in your <laughs> relationship <laughs> once you're married? Oh, exhausting. It's like, you didn't take out the trash. Well, yeah, I'm acting like you don't exist. Yeah, so but this other guy took me. out the trash for me. Yeah. Wait, you're cheating on me? <laughs> you're yeah. counting the trash takeouts now? He takes our kids to school. What? <laughs> Who is this guy? He drives a better car than me? How long have you been cheating? Whatever, man. You just don't pay enough attention. I just think that women want to feel... Desired. I feel like that's when cheating happens, is when a woman feels... And the same with men. Men want to feel desired as well. Men want to feel... Don't you agree? Like, men yeah. want to feel sexual... Not just sexually, but just like... 
they want to feel like their woman needs them. Oh, it's, yeah, like it I, feels I, great. I, I yeah, sense that forget. Chris really appreciates being needed mm-hmm. more than I do. Like I like being needed like physically or like you're just so cute and I just want like I just I like to be adored. I like some guy to look at me and be like God, you're like so f- like I like an adoring look, but I feel like men need to feel essential. Like I need you. I think well, uh, thinking about the point where it's like you want to feel desired. Yeah, I think men have trouble one knowing doing it enough, but then when they're told to do it, it then feels like uh, it doesn't feel as organic to them. They want it to be on like their terms, and well, I men think need they to get over that. Yeah, That's no, a I know. Control thing. I, I hate know. when, but I don't know if it's control. Is, is it control I think or it's is a control it control thing? It's like I don't want to be told what to do. Okay, but what if I then go? Okay, you are fantastic. You're the most beautiful girl in the Great. world. And I then would be they happy go, but then they go, but, but you're then, just saying that. You're just saying I, that because I just said that. Well, then, so then you don't get to tell someone what you need if you're going to. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to be a girl who goes, I need you to touch me more. And then when he does, you go, you're just doing that because I told you. Oh. You are not mature. Yes. You are, you're asking for things that this guy, you're putting this guy in a position where he can't win. So when I ask Chris for something, I always give the caveat of like, I'm not going to be, if you, I'm not just bringing this I'm up not, to bring when it you up. touch me or when you, you know, tell me this thing or say this kinds of things, I'm not going to accuse you of trying to get on my good side or lying. Like I, because the thing is, I know he feels that way. I just, I wouldn't be asking for something yeah. if I didn't think he felt that way. I'm like, I know you feel this way already. I need you to speak my language for sure. For how and that even feels if the to me. person, even if the person though, isn't even throwing it back in your face. For me, it just doesn't feel as but authentic. That's you. I know. That's you because yeah. you don't, you, I've <laughs> noticed through the years, do not like being told what to do. Yeah. You don't like being told, you're not doing this, I need you to do this more. And so you rebel against that, like, do this thing instead of taking it as, yeah. you're not, it's okay you're not perfect. There's some things that I'm sure the person who's telling you that could improve on, but it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. You just can... You might need to work on not yeah. taking that personally. Yeah, I know. I take a lot of things personally, I mean, especially uh, the way you God. just said. That was... <laughs> I mean, I take stuff personally. I have I mean, my own it's stuff. It's so hard to not take well, things Chris personally. Chris and I had a thing the other day that I was really excited about our like realization. I think therapy has helped us, but I sensed his mood shift about something. And it was in that weird state of like where we're just in the car and it's silent. And it's never that way. He dates Nikki Glazer. There's never just silent, you Whoa, know. Even third, when I was, third person yeah. over, <laughs> just, even when he was dating Robot Nikki, I was filling the silence with little taps, and then like Robot voice would be like, "I like this song." Like I was always talking, and so it was silence. And I was thinking, he's in a bad mood. I don't know what I did. Something's wrong. I don't even want to deal with this right now. I don't want to. I don't want to ever be uncomfortable with my partner. I don't want to have these like weird moments where we're both like walking on eggshells yes. about our feelings. I'm like, that is, I told him yesterday after we like got over this fight, I was like, I just want it to always be easy with you. And I know that's an impossibility maybe, but of all people in the world, I would just like us to never have that. I don't need a relationship where it's ever gonna feel like you're mad at me. No, you're mad at me. So I said something and he was like, well, I feel like you're annoyed at me. And I'm like, yeah. well, now I'm... A, so <laughs> the old thought, double and then I go, can annoyed. we backtrack to why you think I'm annoyed with you? And he goes, well, you, I was talking about your, the thing that you were, you know, having struggles with that you brought up. And I was giving you advice and you interrupted me like, f- you know, four times and you just seemed to like dismiss me. And I was like, I could see how that would feel like a dismiss mis- dismissal. It probably, it was a dismissal. I'm really sorry that I did that. I need to work on listening better to you. Will you please? Cause he sometimes goes, when I'll be like you, and you're all angry about this. He's like, "I'm, please don't misconstrue what I, my behavior. Sometimes you misinterpret it." And so I was like, "Will you do the same for me?" Is like when I am talking over you that I maybe I'm just ADD and I haven't talked to anyone all day and I just maybe need to get all these thoughts out and that I'm not. It's not that I don't respect you. Yeah. Even though my actions, you take that as disrespect. Will you give me the benefit of the doubt that it might not be? Because I promise you. I never do anything to purposely hurt yeah. you. I've never done that. And it's just, it's hard. But at the to be able to, I think a good technique in resolving a fight is to say, oh, you know what? This is a lot like this thing I do to you. The thing I'm feeling from you right now that I'm mad about, it reminds me a lot of a thing that I do to you. Mm-hmm. Or 
like just relating it to what the person experiences from you because I think because I think a lot of times in fights I don't know about you but it can seem like one person's getting piled on and the other person is just like I'm perfect so if you can relate it to something you struggle with like yes. I'm a bad listener I talk, talked over you but when your mood shifts it seems like you shut down and you don't give me a chance to like to, you you just assume that I'm mad and then it's over you know why but I think what happens is and is when so when a guy gets or a girl gets quiet they feel like oh if i start talking then it might happen again and then i'll just lose my mind so like he might be afraid to mention anything because then if you interrupt that yes. he'll just be but i take irate. his quietness as i'm punishing her yeah. and now she's not going to get anything of me but because it's just she just fear. broke it's not it's not anger i think it's fear and like, i have to remember a, yeah. a friend of mine is in therapy now and she was like her and her husband both like talked about childhood trauma not trauma in terms of like actual I mean both actual trauma and like little things of like my parents just didn't listen to me or this try to remember for me it's been really helpful lately to picture Chris as like a four-year-old boy whenever these kind of like things that he does that are his coping mechanisms in a fight like either shutting down whatever he does that instead of taking it personally I'm just like that's his little boy like you know, coming to the surface and I just got to be nice to that little boy and not take it like he's being mean to me because my story I tell myself is he hates me. He's disgusted with me. He can't believe he's dating someone who's so annoying and thoughtless and careless and he is going to break up with me because he's realizing right now in this moment, I'm just a despicable person mm -hmm. who's selfish and only over talks. That's the story I tell myself. And then I go to, we're broken up. Like he doesn't want to be with me anymore. I am a bad person. I should just go fucking kill myself. Like that's how quickly I go when he is, uh, gives me a one word answer after he's been talked over. <laughs> that's where I go. Yeah. And where he goes when I, I think where he goes when I, talk over him is she doesn't respect me she um i she doesn't respect me yeah and you don't really, really want my help you yeah just, you, you put all this effort you, in she doesn't see any of you know more yeah. than me you, i actually don't what know what am i anything. even here for she doesn't even need me yes when the truth is i wouldn't even bring, i need you to hear all this shit and then give me your answer and i maybe wasn't but it is true that i need to work on not just steamrolling a conversation and when he says something maybe it's going to benefit me to go Oh, that's interesting you say that and repeat back to him what he said in a way that makes him feel understood and heard. Like there and there are things I miss all the time when I'm just on. Uh, yeah, know. I feel like you get your thoughts out there through words. Like while you're thinking, you're also talking. They both happen exactly at the yes. same time. And I kind of do the same. You don't go. You never I've never seen you go. Except you know, like, when I couldn't talk. That was the only time yeah, where yeah. thoughts had to go. And I'd go, is this important enough to speak? And now I'm back to, <laughs> I need to get back speak to a place of thinking, like yeah. thinking before speaking. But God, is it fun to just speak without thinking? It's, it's the most fun ever. It's what we do for a living. <laughs> We're kind of good at it. Okay, let's get to another good. Fanthrax. That was a great one. Sorry to uh, Noah. Thanks, Sarah. But, yeah, that was great. Sarah. And Genevieve. Here's another uh, ham drip from Victor. Hey, what Nikki, Andrew, Noah. Um, I was just listening to today's Victor. episode, Tagging Out, and you um, commented about how guys like use sporting games or sporting events to like let out emotions Get that they can't here. elsewhere. I actually went to yeah. uh, the Detroit Lions home opener uh, at Ford Field, and when I was walking to my seat, I heard a guy behind me just go, oh, man, I can't wait to yell. And I, I laughed to myself and then <laughs> some of my friends of like, Dude, foreshadowing therapy like that's not, that's not a healthy mentality going into this game but i just, I just thought it was Hilarious. funny y'all commented on that because uh yeah I, I went to a couple of football games this season and and it's definitely a thing so uh love the show and yeah. uh ja jackpot thanks victor hey um oh, that's, that's a good so point. funny I mean, just right on the nose just yeah. but i like that that person at least there's yeah. something <laughs> i like about that of yeah, like he honest. know he knows what he needs yeah. he has yeah. an excuse yeah. to yell <laughs> and we did we did uncover something in that i think men you're right they use that as an excuse to get feelings out because i my dad's anger that night just startled me so much but it was just something he'd probably be, isn't able to get out anywhere else probably yeah but it was just he can't turn and yell at you. That just, just says abuse. <laughs> he's got to yell at. He's got to yell through the. He's yelling at you through the bangles. <laughs> I. Well, he's like message received. <laughs> I'm like, can you be more Chris like and just not say anything? He's like, come on, say. score a touchdown. Also, buy me a car. <laughs> it is. It is interesting how some people, when they're upset, scream. 
and some people <laughs> shut down. Yeah, or yeah, or do both. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea of the guy go- when... going to the game, and he's impartial. He's just there to yell. He's just like, yeah. he's not even there. He's well, just yelling. I used to want to have a thing where you could go break stuff because I think. Well, that, that is a thing. Yeah, there yeah. are rooms where you can just go shatter things with a sledgehammer. Yeah, listen, it's all the same thing. Yeah, it's the so, same shit. And playing sports, I'm, I bet that gets it out even more. I mean, like... Oh, dude, it got out everything. That was the best. And then it just goes away. That's yes. the hardest part. We were talking That's about that when they retire. You just... Performing, comedy also does... I mean, performing does that too. Like, I feel like my whole set can be dictated on... Like my my mood, even podcasting. Like I came in here yesterday depressed, and it was a whole different vibe than the day before. I think that's why I like to do four days a week, is because I can't guarantee I'm going to be in the best <laughs> podcasting mood w- one day a week. You know, like the only it's too much th- yeah. of a grab bag with old moody. I feel like though, if we had to do probability, days. if I know you well enough, towards Wednesday, Thursday, you're gonna tend to be at least when you're touring. Interesting. When you're touring Wednesday and Thursday, you start. Freak it out? No, no, no. It starts getting better. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Monday and Tuesday. I because think. I'm back in a yeah. place where I don't have any purpose. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Final thought. Kirsten was on a vacation the other day from her job, and she, it was a nine day vacation in Cape Cod, all over the. Who took care of the pods? <laughs> care of themselves that's what makes them fall. i did a lot of research on fall pots i was like why do they exist she was like well they are plants that don't need to be watered they can exist in the freezing cold so oh, to have a kid pin like it, that Noah, pin it um so <laughs> she but she goes because she was having she was starting to freak out about like she bought a vibe i'm sorry kirsten she bought a toy that vibrates that she went to a store and there this the woman there talked them into this toy and they spent like two hundred dollars on this thing. I mean, these vibrators are like expensive now. William Sonoma. <laughs> yeah, restoration yeah. hardware. <laughs> restoration hardware. <laughs> it was a, it was a, just a, a bed post you can grind on. Oh, wear your heart, all right. <laughs> hey now. And she was feeling this immense, and I think I, it can't just be her and I that have this. If you haven't worked in a couple days, or you feel like maybe you have a, a vacation, right, and you haven't earned money p- proactively in a couple days, little charges suddenly no matter how well off you are start feeling like when we were off when you couldn't speak yeah i was like i can't get sushi yes it will never come back yes yeah 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 i feel that way yeah and so kirsten was having that with this she was so upset (laughs) but she was like i you know because we've been counting cries and coming and so she was like i (laughs) cried because of this dumb thing we wasted our money on that didn't even work and and wasn't even good. And I looked at the toy and I was like, oh, I actually have one of those. I don't think you're supposed to do what they, she, I go, you put that inside you during sex, like with another. And she was like, yeah, that's what it says to do. And I'm like, oh, I guess I never read the book. I always thought that was a solo toy that was so dumb. So I got to try it out and see if it works for me. But anyway, she was so <laughs> mad about it. And I was like, oh my God, I so relate to this. One of the fights I got in with Chris during my silent times, uh, it was right after my silent time, but I've been off work now. I haven't earned money for you know, the podcast, I earn money, but like it just doesn't even feel, I just, I haven't been working yeah, in a yeah, way yeah. that makes me feel like I'm working. And I like ordered a Starbucks to the wrong place in Lexington, Kentucky, when we were there watching Greg Warren's special. And Chris and I took an Uber to this other Starbucks and Chris had kind of told me, well, we're going to this part of town. And I just like selected a Starbucks that I thought and I selected the wrong one. And so for a second I was like, well, you told me it's town center. And I was like, and I ordered it to town. Like, I was just like, well, you told me town center and I ordered it to that one. So that's why it's at yeah. another one. But I'll guess, I guess I'll just uh, waste $8 on a drink. And I just had that like toot of like, and then he shuts down. Cause he's like, you're mad at me. Like I'm to blame for it. And I'm like, and then I just go, babe, I'm sorry. I don't know why I, I did. I just overreacted. It's eight dollars. It's not a big deal. I just ordered one to this one. Who cares? It's not a big deal. And he was like, "But we can go get yours. It's fine." And he was figuring it away. And I was like, "It's so stupid. I just haven't worked an eight dollars to me." It, even yesterday, I went to Caldi's because they didn't have almond milk at Starbucks on the street, and I it was ten dollars for a smaller coffee than the one I get at Starbucks that is not even as good. And I was so mad about it. And I can afford ten dollars. I mean, but for some reason, it was de- it's devastating right now. Like every. I just but anyway Kirsten said that she realized how I feel she was like when I'm not home when I'm on vacation I feel constant guilt about everything and I feel like I can't really enjoy myself I feel like you know when it was 
she one day it was rainy there and she started crying because she was like, well, this is a pointless day to even be here. I should be home working instead. So she felt guilty and she was like, and I go, I feel that way when I'm home. Yeah. Like I, I, that's how I, I feel imbalanced. So it's like the opposite. She feels secure at home because that's where money, routine, everything. And I feel on the road is almost like home. Oh, and okay. when I'm home, like you said, Monday, Tuesday, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I always thought that it was like, it's interesting with you because you don't get the runner high from perform. At least you will never. You never Chris really. Chris says I do. He was like, "You I are think charged you, up." After I think a show. you are. I yeah. think you are. But I think I you almost fight against it. Some, or at least you verbalize that it's like not that big of a deal. Maybe it's to like. I'm in a good a def- mood and I'm spunky, but I'm not like. They love me. I yes. love this. No, you don't do I'm that. Amazing. But I think that high, whether it's like consciously or like you want to admit it it's it is a high yes it goes somewhere Mm -hmm. so then it has to come down no matter how maybe you don't go to the highest so you come down come down it's always for every action there is yeah it's it's gonna be a pendulum swing and i i got remember when i was really depressed in la i don't know if i even talked about this on the podcast i was so depressed after jimmy kimmel and someone was like yeah you just did cocaine yeah you just were on a bender for three days preparing for Kimmel. It was just like, <gasps> and then doing it and everyone's like, you go out, when you do Kimmel, it was so cool. I can't wait to like have my own talk show and come up with all these like rituals. But I think I said it like they they go like, best show ever. And all the crew, I mean, there's like 40 people create like a conga, like not a conga line, but like a, you know, <laughs> gauntlet for you to go down and you hand slap everyone. Then you go back. It's just like, and then afterwards they all give a toast to me yeah. and they're, it, they, it, it was just how am I not going to come down from that? It is ecstasy. So I got to, what I need to do is not, if I did that every day, it wouldn't, it, I would get used to these ups and downs. For sure. I would be able to regulate my adrenal glands and my like system. But when I'm not doing that regularly, it's going, I'm going to have crashes. And that was what that was. Well, I think. Nice to know. Uh, yeah. I think admitting that like, I Women think, after they have babies, yeah, the baby's coming. It's here. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, like you're married. You're engaged. All it's that. Not just hormones. Just looking forward to anything. It's got to be like this. Like and or after a wedding, I always worry about women after a wedding because man, do you get so much attention before a wedding? And women, unlike Noah, who like thrive on that, are so excited about. I'm going to be the center of attention. Everything's about me this weekend. And even if you're not like that, it's just you know it's a big deal, and you're worried about all these details. And then I. I always, honestly, when I go to weddings, I just look at the bride and I go, oh, tomorrow you are n- no one's, I mean, your honeymoon's going to be great, but even that's going to be a little bit lonely because you get to this island in Hawaii where no one really is, is, is there's no family and friends yeah. around anymore that are as excited as also, they were here. the next weekend, you have another wedding. They don't have another wedding. You what have mean? another wedding to look forward to. Doing oh, another show. yeah, doing shows, yes. So I think, I think, I guess... I think the defense mechanism that, or not defense, but like a way for us to shield it is go, yeah, it's 4,000 people. It's the same thing as doing a show for 100 people. It's the same thing when it's not. Really, it right. isn't. Because it, even if it's, we have to tell ourselves that. Because, well, because if not, we know it's going to go away. It goes it's away. It's almost like, and, but also we can't get. When people are scared to fall in love because they're like, what if, because they've been hurt before. What if this goes away? That's why I've had so many shows canceled. Not so many, but like, Every show I've had has been canceled. It's never been like, I just want to step away. And it hurt so badly the first time with Nikki and Sarah live. That you that have to get ahead the of The next it. time yeah. I was like, I'm not going to get excited about this mm-hmm. because I know it will be canceled. And it's hard. And I even feel that way about having kids. Like I have said it before, but if you're a mother or someone who wants to be a mother, I think you are so much braver than I am because to love something that much that if it's taken from you, won't just like you know you can lose your job you can lo- you're gonna lose your parents we're gonna lose we're gonna lose everything we have eventually because you die and you lose nuclear it nuclear war yeah and nuclear war it's about eight weeks away <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> at least i i would have never have chosen to have parents if i knew the pain that is awaiting me when they die i am so scared of it i if if it was a thing where it's like you can be someone who's just in the way that i'm gonna be childless probably i would like to be parentless because i love them so much I'm in for a world of hurt. So why would I want another thing I could possibly mm-hmm. lose? Mm-hmm. I just don't want to do it. Even my nephew and niece, I'm just like a little resentful they were thrusted into my life because now I love this thing so much that I'm like, if something happens to them, my life oh, is insane. over. It'd be insane. 
Although I do, I said made a joke the other day because Anya was talking about someone she heard on some podcast or something that said, you know, this woman was having just kind of monotony in her career at the age of 40 or whatever. And she was just like, I guess this is my life. And then her dad died and it made her like rethink everything. And I'm like, hey, can my dad die pretty soon? Because I would really like to like, I need a re- I need something to like jolt me. <laughs> so it's kind of funny being like. Well, maybe just like a heart attack and almost die. It's what I, it's yeah. the thing I want. At least in the world. At least but, in the world. Yeah. But I know that when my dad dies and my mom, but when my dad dies, because I'm like daddy's girl, the rock, when I will, it will, something will happen. I will start a jewelry business. I will start pinning things on Pinterest. Something, there will you'll be a giant a canoe, shift probably. in me. I think yeah. you'll buy a canoe. Um, but anyway, oh, um, what was I going to say? Sometimes we need those shifts to like, to push ourselves forward. Unfortunately, it's yeah. like, can be very sad. But. I'm looking for one. And do you know what I just, because Kirsten made a giant uh, change in her life that were like, she was kind of teeter tottering. No, not that oh. thing. So she was teeter tottering on a decision that she needed to make of like, am I going to do this thing or am I not going to do it? And the thing that made her decide to do it, which I think is so dumb, and I totally like rolled my eyes when she did it, she saw a psychic. And yeah. so I You're just wrote to Kirsten's psychic because I was like, <laughs> I need something mystical or some kind of push to like, make me believe like make me make a decision and not that i even need to make a decision i just feel like i'm i just need a jolt Mm -hmm. and i don't want anyone in my life to die i don't want the jolt to happen from like a car accident i want like maybe a psychic to really floor me with something now would it be here's the thing with psychics though they're never negative like i sometimes i wish they were negative just because that would jolt me yeah be like well if you're on this path well this psychic doesn't know your last name doesn't look you up at all and I, there's something about that that I feel good about. I almost wrote to her and was like, this is Nikki Glazer Because I kind of like to tell people, so like maybe they can Google me, even if I wasn't famous, just so they know I'm not like a f- crazy person. Mm-hmm. But I just said Nikki. So I feel like... I'm excited. Me too. We'll this, see what happens. This, she hasn't written me back, but I predict... Dana White, who's the UFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we he have the He has the girliest name ever. Uh-huh. We have uh, to go. He uh, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll save it for next time. I don't. Oh know. Oh my god! Well, I don't know. Stay tuned. We actually have a lot to get to next Monday. I do want to preemptively say that um, we have an amazing song that someone had sex to that we are going to play on Monday's show. That is so funny. I hope we get to it. Uh, we have your Dana White story. Uh, we'll have. I'm going to Metric to see Metric in Denver. This is the band Metric. I'm going to um, Jake Owen tomorrow night. Andrew's going to see Jake Owen tomorrow night in St. Louis and St. Charles. Um, I'm going to Denver with Noah and my friend Kat, and we're having a whole weekend. We're probably going to go oh, to yeah. Columbine for a fourth time. I'm very excited. <laughs> It'll be Noah's first. One for each kid. I have been to Columbine three times. I'm going to try to go four times in a year. So that'll be this weekend. I got to get this call. Thank you guys for listening so much. Don't be cool this weekend. And Jack, Jack Sparrow. the guy from White Stripes. <laughs>